I want to share with you a story that I ran across uh, on Facebook uh, from Pastor Bill Wilson. You all know Pastor Bill. He usually comes once a year. He has the Sunday schools literally. He's from New York City. He has a Sunday school in New York City on Saturdays. But he's, he has Sunday schools all over the world, literally all over the world on Saturdays. Hundreds and thousands of children gather all over the world for these Sunday schools. Whether the country's closed, it makes no difference. They get in. He has teams in all these nations. So they've had a team doing Sunday school in Gaza for quite a while. And so when the war started, they felt because of the safety of the children that they needed to just put it on hold for a, few, for a while. And so um, they had some situation happen. Some of their volunteers were shot. They didn't want that to happen to any of the children. So they put it on hold. Pastor Bill, week before last, talked to his leader there, one of his team members that leads the team. And his leader said, Pastor Bill, we feel like we have to have a service on Easter. We have to. It's Easter. We'll, and, and Pastor Bill said, are you sure? Because he knew they were risking their lives. Yeah. And he said, yes. The team is, we're all in agreement. We have to do a Sunday service. So this happened last Sunday in Gaza. It says that they found an empty lot in the refugee camp where they always meet. It said they were surrounded by buildings that had been blown up. You could hear gunfire in the background. But this is what Bill posted following the Easter service last Sunday in Gaza, in the middle of a war. Han, who was one of the team members, had just picked up the cross from our volunteer mom's tomb for his object lesson to preach an illustrated sermon on the death and resurrection of Christ. He lifted up the cross and walked to the front of the Sunday school crowd. He was trying to grab their attention and help them understand what Jesus went through on the road to Calvary for them. I don't like to use this term, but out of nowhere, this middle-aged woman who was holding a child started running towards Han as fast as she could. She was screaming in Arabic, help me, please help me. They said, you can help me. Nobody knew what to think. Was this another Hamas attack, Hamas attack? Nobody knew. The whole crowd of a thousand people were now looking at her running to the front. Han had a table set up and he was holding the cross for the object lesson. She laid the boy on the table in front of him while everyone was watching. Han put it, his hand on her shoulder and tried to calm her down. He asked her, how can, how can I help? She said, my son is dead. Somebody said, you can help him. Suddenly a hush came over the crowd. It's Easter Sunday. There was no doctor, no medicine, and no hospital available. She tried to explain to Han that her eight-year-old boy had literally starved to death. She tried to get food for him, but she couldn't get any to save him. She had just watched her son die right in front of her. I don't know if you've ever held a dying child in your arms. I have, Bill says. For those of you that have, you know you'll never forget it. Han asked, how long has your son been dead? She said, at least 15 minutes. He looked at the crowd of kids and parents. They were all just watching. With the strongest voice that he could project, without any sound system there, he yelled at the top of his voice, this is Easter. He said, we know Jesus died for us. It's by his stripes we are healed. We believe in miracles. So now, I want all of you to stretch your hands out to this dead boy. We're going to pray. I want all of you to pray with me and believe that Jesus can do a miracle. All of the kids and parents stretched their hands out. Han put his right hand on that little boy's, dead boy's chest. He said, Jesus, you were crucified on the cross and your father God rose you from the dead. I'm asking you right now, in your name, in Jesus' name, touch this little boy. This boy had been dead for over 15 minutes. 
The crowd was so quiet, and they all had their hands stretched out. Suddenly, suddenly, this little boy's eyes just opened. Han looked at him, but he didn't want to say anything prematurely. But then the boy coughed. Han put his left hand on the boy's back and sat him up, and then the boy stood. Han yelled to the crowd, now you see this little boy is alive. That is why we are here today. Just like God raised his son from the dead, Jesus now raised this little boy up from the dead. This is what Jesus can do for all of us if we give him our lives. All by themselves, the crowd just started clapping and yelling. Some of the IDF soldiers came out from their hiding places because they didn't know what was happening. Han sensed the anointing and knew it was the right time. So he said, if anyone here wants to give their life to Jesus, when I count to three, raise your hand. I'll lead you in a prayer for Jesus to forgive you. You'll become a Christian. He said it three times. He wanted to make sure everyone understood what he had said. Realize they're in Gaza. The crowd is Palestinian. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe he was the son of God. Han said he didn't know what was going to happen or if anyone would stand, but he knew the Holy Spirit was in that place. Several of the dads in the back were counting. 686 kids and parents raised their hands, stood up, prayed the sinner's prayer, and gave their lives to Christ. They didn't just hear the Easter story. They lived the Easter story. This was last Sunday. They're eight hours ahead of us, I think. We're in church. They've already had this service. I mean, hello, this is last Sunday. This really happened to someone like Han, who's an ordinary Palestinian that knows Jesus. Han then started walking around the crowd laying hands on people, praying for them, and leading them in prayer. Mothers were kneeling down and crying. They didn't know exactly what was happening, but they knew what they had just seen. They saw the power of God that had just been demonstrated right in front of their eyes. It was nearly 45 minutes before Han could stop ministering to the people. He talked to that grateful mother again, prayed for the little boy who had just been raised from the dead, and made sure she got extra food and water. As the crowd started to leave, one of the IDF soldiers who had been guarding the Sunday school came up to Han and said, thank you. He said, I know you love your people, and I love my people. But today was a really special day. He said, when you asked people to stand and pray, you didn't see me, but I stood up. I lifted my hand to heaven, and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. <clears throat> At that moment, the soldier took his necklace from around his neck. It was the aluminum necklace that almost all the IDF soldiers wear after the October 7th attack. That soldier took his necklace and put it on Han. On the necklace, it says in Hebrew, bring the hostages home now. The soldier said, you have faith in Jesus, and now I have faith in Jesus too. Together, we'll bring our people together. And Han said, yes, we will, in Jesus' name. Han has been wearing that necklace as a symbol of two men who had built a bond in the middle of a war through a miracle. And yet, with all their differences, they stood still for just a few moments and sensed the presence of God. The soldier rejoined his patrol. Han picked up a little bit of leftover food and water and took the cross back to our volunteer mother's grave. I guess it really was an unusual Easter Sunday.